Zakir Naik, like his mentor in deception, Ahmed Didat, before him, has built his career on the colossal ignorance of his followers. Naik knows that when he speaks, he's speaking to a room full of Muslims who've never studied the Quran or the Bible, and who therefore won't be able to recognize when he's lying to them about the Quran or the Bible. The staggering stupidity of Naik's fans thus allows him to say whatever he wants, no matter how ridiculous, and the crowd will praise Allah for the lies they've been told. Unfortunately for Nike and his freakishly foolish followers, there are people like me who have studied the Quran and the Bible and who therefore know exactly when he's lying. The fun part is that Nike is so incredibly sloppy when he starts lying, he always ends up accidentally giving us yet another way to prove that Muhammad was a false prophet. Take Nike's claim that there's a prophecy about Muhammad in Isaiah 29:12. Unlike Zakir Nike, I want all of my viewers to know exactly what this passage is saying, so before we examine Nike's comments, let's read the passage. In Isaiah 29, God tells the people of Jerusalem that he's going to punish them for their rebellion. He calls Jerusalem Ariel. Ariel sounds like the Hebrew for altar hearth of God. We'll see why in a moment. Beginning in verse 1. Woe to you, Ariel, Ariel, the city where David settled. Add year to year and let your cycle of festivals go on. Yet I will besiege Ariel. She will mourn and lament. She will be to me like an altar hearth. Jerusalem will be like an altar hearth, the place where everything burns. Hence, Ariel. I will encamp against you on all sides. I will encircle you with towers and set up my siege works against you. This was fulfilled when the Assyrians came against the city in 701 BC and again when the Babylonians invaded in 586 BC. Brought low, you will speak from the ground. Your speech will mumble out of the dust. Your voice will come ghost-like from the earth. Out of the dust, your speech will whisper. So God's going to punish Jerusalem. What's he going to do after he punishes Jerusalem? He's going to punish Jerusalem's enemies because they're under God's judgment too. Verse 5. But your many enemies will become like fine dust, the ruthless hordes like blown chaff. Suddenly, in an instant, the Lord Almighty will come with thunder and earthquake and great noise, with windstorm and tempest and flames of a devouring fire. Then the hordes of all the nations that fight against Ariel, that attack her and her fortress and besiege her, will be as it is with a dream, with a vision in the night, as when a hungry person dreams of eating, but awakens hungry still, as when a thirsty person dreams of drinking, but awakens faint and thirsty still. In other words, as Jerusalem's enemies rejoice over their victory, God's suddenly going to bring them back to reality, like waking someone from a dream. So will it be with the hordes of all the nations that fight against Mount Zion. Now, God has told them exactly what's going to happen. Why can't the people of Jerusalem see what's coming? They can't see what's coming because they have become spiritually blind and can no longer understand or accept God's revelations. God says in verse 9, Be stunned and amazed, blind yourselves, and be sightless. Be drunk, but not from wine. Stagger, but not from beer. The Lord has brought over you a deep sleep. He has sealed your eyes, the prophets. He has covered your heads, the seers. For you, i.e., the Jews of Jerusalem, this whole vision, what vision? The vision about Jerusalem being punished. This whole vision is nothing but words sealed in a scroll. And if you give the scroll, about God's judgment against the people of Jerusalem, to someone who can read and say, read this, please, they will answer, I can't, it is sealed. They'll make an excuse for why they won't listen to the warning about God's judgment. Or, if you give the scroll to someone who cannot read and say, 
Read this, please. They will answer, I don't know how to read. Once again, they'll make an excuse for rejecting the warning. So, this is a pretty straightforward passage. God says that he's going to punish Jerusalem. Then he's going to punish Jerusalem's enemies. Then he explains why the people of Jerusalem can't understand the vision. They've become spiritually blind. And when God tells them what he's going to do, they make excuses for rejecting his warnings. There are two kinds of people, literate and illiterate. If you give the revelation to someone who can read, he'll say, I can't read it, it's sealed. If you give it to someone who can't read, he'll say, I can't read. Either way, people reject the message. Pretty clear, right? Not if you're Zachar Nike. If you're Zachar Nike and you read verse 12, where the spiritually blind people of Jerusalem make excuses for why they reject God's revelations, you somehow conclude that this passage is about Muhammad. It's kind of ironic that when Zachar Nike reads a passage about spiritual blindness and the inability to understand a simple message from God, Zachar Nike shows that he's spiritually blind and can't understand a simple message from God. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12, that the book shall be given to the prophet, and it will be said, read, I pray thee, and he will say, I am not learned. Notice that Zachar Knight can't even quote the verse without lying about it. He claims that the verse says, the book shall be given to the prophet. That the book shall be given to the prophet. That the book shall be given to the prophet. That the book shall be given to the prophet. Here's verse 12 again. Anything about the book being given to a prophet here? No, God tells the people of Jerusalem that to them, the vision about God's judgment on their city is like a scroll, and they make excuses for rejecting it. The passage says absolutely nothing about a prophet being given a book or a scroll. So why does Zachar Nike lie by telling his fans that the verse includes the word prophet? He lies because he's Zachar Nike, and that's just what Zachar Nike does. And that's what he has to do if he wants to make this passage sound like it's talking about a prophet and not about spiritually blind people stubbornly refusing to accept God's warnings. But why should we think that this is a prophecy about Muhammad? And like Archangel Gabriel, Jibreel salam, when he told to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ikra, the prophet replied, Ma ana bikari. I am not learned. Exact fulfillment of the prophecy of the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12. So according to Zachar Nike, when verse 12 says that someone will be given a scroll or a book, the book in question is the Quran. But what's in the scroll according to all the parts of the passage that Zachar Nike deliberately left out? The scroll contains a message about God's judgment on Jerusalem in 701 BC. Zachar Naik twists the verse so much that he declares that Muhammad is the only possible fulfillment. This prophecy fulfills no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, once again, in a spirit of generosity, I'm going to grant what Zachar Nike says. I'm going to grant that Isaiah 29, 12 is talking about Muhammad. By granting that this verse is talking about Muhammad, as Zachar Nike claims, we learn three important things. First, Muhammad was spiritually blind and in total rebellion against God. Isaiah 29, 12 says nothing about a prophet receiving a book. It's about people who are spiritually blind rejecting God's message. Zachar Nike says that this is about Muhammad. Wonderful. So according to Zachar Nike, Muhammad stands condemned for his spiritual blindness and his willful rebellion against God. Second, Isaiah 29, 12 isn't about a prophet, but Nike claims that it's about a prophet anyway. 
If we grant what Nike claims, then we have to ask, what about the other prophet in this passage? Obviously, if the person who's told to read the scroll and says, I don't know how to read, is a prophet, then the person who's told to read the scroll and says, I can't, it's sealed, must also be a prophet, right? If being told to read the book means that you're a prophet, then this passage predicts two different prophets, one who says, I can't read, and the other who says, I can't, because it's sealed. So where's the prophet who was told to read the book, but couldn't because the book was sealed? He hasn't come yet, which means that he's coming in the future, which means that there's another prophet after Muhammad, which means that the Quran is a lie because it says that Muhammad was the final prophet. Hence, if this passage is talking about prophets, Islam is false. Thank you, Zakir Naik, for giving us yet another reason to conclude that the Quran is wrong. Third, in verses 13 and 14, God talks about the people who reject his revelations in verses 11 and 12. But remember, according to Zakir Naik, verse 12 is about Muhammad. So what does God say about Muhammad, according to Zakir Naik? The Lord says, these people, i.e. the spiritually blind people, including Muhammad, who stubbornly reject God's revelations, come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. They honor God with their lips, but their hearts are far from God. Their worship consists of following a set of rules. Sound like any religion we know? One where they memorize prayers in a language many of them don't even speak? Pretend they're fasting while gorging themselves twice per day, walk circles around a giant pagan cube, mindlessly following rules that they've been taught? How is God going to punish them for their false worship? Next verse. Therefore, once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Their punishment is that the wisdom of the wise will perish and the intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. In other words, they'll become complete morons. Now think about this because this is just too perfect. In Isaiah 29, 12, spiritually blind people use their illiteracy as an excuse for rebelling against God's warnings. Zakir Naik not only claims that this is about Muhammad, he claims that Muhammad is the only one who fulfills this prophecy. This prophecy fulfills no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. God goes on to condemn the spiritually blind, illiterate rebels for worshiping God by mindlessly following a set of rules, which is precisely what Muhammad did and what he taught his followers to do. God's punishment is to remove their wisdom and intelligence, turning them into complete idiots. Zakir Naik reads this passage, and he's too stupid to realize that the passage is condemning and mocking these spiritually blind people. So Naik tells his audience, this is about Islam. This is about our prophet. This is about us. And Nike's fans are so shockingly ignorant that they shout Allahu Akbar when he tells them that a passage about spiritual blindness, rebellion, and false worship is all about Islam. And the saddest part is that when I tell Muslims what the passage actually says, and that Zakir Naik is making Muslims look like complete fools, they don't get mad at Nike, they get mad at me forcing me to conclude that they're not really interested in truth or reality. My Muslim friends, there are only two possibilities here. Either Isaiah chapter 29 verse 12 is a prophecy about Muhammad 
In which case, it's not saying that he's a prophet. It's saying that he was in rebellion against God and that God judged him by giving him a lobotomy. Or Isaiah chapter 29 verse 12 is not about Muhammad, in which case we have to wonder why Islam's top apologists keep embarrassing themselves and their followers and their religion by claiming that it is. So which is it, my Muslim friends? Let me know in the comments section.